The book of Joshua, session number 24. We continue with chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And the heading for this um, session is the new food for the new place. We have come a long way. If we look at uh, um, Exodus 16, verse 35, God said that uh, Moses must put the manna um, in the Ark of the Covenant as a testimony. The manna in the New Testament is explained to us. It is the, the Torah that became life. The life of God's people has always been the manna, the bread. But comparing manna to normal bread that is baked with leaven, if you look at the nice leavened bread, it is nice and soft and fluffy and, and lacquer to eat. The manna was uh, sweet as honey, but it wasn't like a nice fluffy piece of baked bread. It reminds us more of flat bread, like the unleavened bread. And Exodus um, 30... Um, Exodus 16 verse 35 explains that this is the manna that Israel ate for 40 years until they came back into the promised land. So here in Joshua 5 verse 11, and Israel ate the old corn of the land on the morrow, on the morning after the Passover, unleavened cakes. They parched corn for themselves and they made unleavened cakes. Because it was the Feast of Unleavened Bread that followed the Pesach during which um, the day before the Pesach uh, when they got circumcised. So they were eating the unleavened bread. For 40 years they were eating the manna. Years they were eating the manna. And now they are going into a battle. This end time generation whose reproach of Mitzrayim has been rolled away. And who is here at Gilgal um, on the 14th day of the month of Aviv. Who have come through the wilderness and who have passed over the Jordan. And who is ready and willing and faithful to God. Not fearful to go and take in the promised land. Take up the covenant promise that God gave them. They are, have been eating manna for 40 years and they loved it. This generation, not like the previous generation who said they got sick of the manna. They said they were sick and tired of the manna. And they wanted meat. And God gave them meat until they vomited it out of their nostrils. You remember we discussed this in Exodus. Discussed this in Exodus. So this generation, these people that are going through all these steps listening to Joshua, doing what he says, going where he sends them, following him into the promised land, not being afraid of the enemies, not being afraid because God seems quiet and the enemy seems loud and busy and screaming and bigger than us. No, we sit and we have Passover and we're willing to eat the unleavened bread. Because why? If we go and go through this process, if we allow God to work with us and to bring us up to this point throughout our whole journey and to prepare us for this end time battle, if we are willing to do that, what is going to happen to us? What will we taste? What will be for eating the unleavened bread, for eating the flat manna every single day for 40 years, for our whole life on, um, on earth in this journey, in this period of 6,000 years since we have fallen and giving the, given this, this kingdom to the enemy. And the enemy is, is in charge of this world. And God says, in this world you will have trouble, but don't be afraid. I am not of this world, you are not of this world, and I'm coming back. And I'm going to change this world back, I'm going to make the new heaven and the new earth, and I will restore my kingdom on this earth again. So what are we looking forward to? Willing to eat the manna still, willing to eat the unleavened flat bread. Also, if you come to the Pesach 2022 feast we're going to have, 
we're going to talk about if we're willing to eat this bread and we come to the brink of the Jordan River. Then the manna will cease, it will stop on the morning after they have eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. Neither. After 40 years, the manna is stopping. 40 years, 4, 440. Um, 4 is always a messianic figure. It's also a messianic period, 40 days, 40 nights. All this has to do with the fact that Messiah is our bread of life. Although it is a narrow, difficult pathway to walk on, he is feeding us for our 40 days on the mountain like Moses, for our 40 days of fasting like Yeshua in the wilderness, for our 40 days of wandering, learning the Torah, getting to trust God, not like the previous generation. He's feeding us trust God, not like the previous generation. He's feeding us with manna. So after our life's journey, the manna will stop. The Bible in the New Testament, both Yeshua and Paul explains to us how he is the manna that fell from heaven, that was feeding us. We will not live from bread alone, but we will live from the manna from heaven, the living Torah of Yahuwah, our Elohim. So if we're eating this manna all our life, then that which also symbolizes the manna, our following the Torah, our reading our Bible, our looking up into the heavens and and try to imagine our God, all that is going to end. Our prayers to Him, although we know He's with us, we don't see Him, we don't hear Him. We see and hear Him in nature, we see and hear Him in His in His Word. He talks to us through our, our being, with, with His Word, yes, but we don't taste Him like we can taste a piece of bread. But if we taste him like we tasted the manna, if we eat him, he says, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. If we eat him like a piece of unleavened bread and, and he feeds us during this 40 years wilderness journey of ours, what are we going to see when all this is over? So the children of Israel didn't have manna anymore, but they started eating of the fruit of the land. When this journey is over, then that manna that symbolizes the bread of life, Yeshua himself, the symbol will stop. We will no longer have our Bibles. We will no longer you know, be on our knees and pray to an unseen God who sits on a throne in heaven and who's not with us here right now. I'm not talking about in the spirit. You know what I mean? He's not physically here. I can't turn around and say, good morning, my father. He's not here. I can, of course, say good morning, my father, which I do every morning in prayer. Understand what I'm trying to say. When the symbol of the manna stops, when the manna that we eat stops after our 40 years journey, it will be replaced with the real fruit of the promised land. What is the real fruit of the promised land? How different is the fruit of the land going to taste? Are we, we are satisfied. We are not like the generation that says, I'm sick of this manna. I want the meat of Egypt. Ooh, I want the nice, meaty taste and satisfaction and comfort and lust of this world. We are satisfied with eating the manna. And for us who are satisfied for 40 years, the manna will stop at one stage. And it will be replaced with the fruit of the promised land. You need to understand this and you need to take your pen now and go with me to Revelation 2 verse 7. Revelation 2 verse 7. He that has an ear, let him hear, let him shema what the Ruach HaKodesh of God 
says unto the children of Israel, the children of Israel, the church, the ecclesia, the kahol, not the church out there. They are, they are not satisfied with the manna. They don't like the Torah, the bread of life. They, they want the, the sun god meat to eat. This church that God is talking to, this church has an ear to shema, to listen and obey. And when we've listened and obeyed for our 40 years wilderness journey, God says to him that overcome, that overcame Egypt, that overcame the temptations in the wilderness, that overcame the fear of Jericho, and that is meeting with me, coming over the Jordan, getting circumcised, being willing to eat the unleavened bread, keeping the Pesach, walking around the seven days of unleavened bread, walking seven days of unleavened bread, walking seven times around Jericho. Those people who's got an ear to obey the commandments, the Torah and the feast days and the Sabbath of our God. For them, I will give to eat of the tree of life. I will give to you to eat of the fruit of the promised land. The fruit that you were eating when you were immortal and not sinful and not fallen. When you were still eating the tree of life every single day in paradise, in the Garden of Eden. That is what I'm going to give back to you. This is what... Two trees in the Garden of Eden Bible study ministry is all about showing you the full circle of how we were kicked out from the garden because we didn't hear, trust, obey and believe God and how we come full circle 6,000 years back, back to the Garden of Eden, eating again from the tree of life from the fruit of the promised land. When we keep all of these Passovers with unleavened bread, there will come a time that we will meet the real bread, the real manna, the real unleavened bread, the real fruit from the tree of life. We are going to meet him face to face. The Bible says, taste and see that Yahuwah is good. Taste how good he is. We are going to meet him face to face. We are going to hear him with our own physical ears. We are going to see him with our own eyes. We are going to taste to taste him with our own mouths. Maybe he will, he will allow us not only to cry at his feet, but he will pick us up in his arms. And maybe he will kiss us on the mouth and kiss us on the cheek and say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have eaten the bread of affliction. You have endured all the way to the end, my bride. You have come and believed in me and turned back to my house, O oh, my prodigal son. And we're going to taste maybe his tears, tears of joy. Because we finally are restored back to our God in the covenant promise that he so desperately wants us to understand and come back to with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Isaac and Jacob. Let us eat and let us look forward while we're eating the bread of affliction. Let us look forward to the fruit of the promised land. It is such a worthwhile journey. Let us not be scared. Let us not be afraid. Mark 8 verse 34. Because um, what is the context here? Yeshua says in Mark 8 31. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. Bread of affliction, manna for 40 years, flat unleavened bread. And be rejected by the elders, unleavened bread. And be rejected by the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. Isn't this what he said is maybe 
also lying ahead for our sakes, also lying ahead for us, as lying ahead for us, as his followers, because a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, Yeshua said, they will persecute you. And he, and he spoke that openly, and Peter took him one side and said, No, there's no ways that you are going to do this. No, 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 no. And Yeshua said to him, What's talking through you now is Satan. I have to go through this. And also you will have to go through this. You have to eat your bread of affliction. Because, verse 34, Whoever will come after me, he must deny himself, deny the nice fluffy white bread of this world. He must take up his execution stake. Execution stake happened during Pesach. Pesach. During Pesach we eat unleavened bread. We choose the execution stake. We choose that bread of affliction. We choose to be rejected by this world and these religious leaders and this world government and family and friends that don't want to eat the bread of affliction, the, the flat, boring, unleavened bread. No, they want to be part of a world. Continue to buy and sell. Continue to go to Sunday church. Continue to enjoy their Christmas and Ishtar and all these things. Let them then eat the bread of Egypt. And Babylon, Daniel came and said, I will not eat the nice delicacies of Babylon. No, I will eat um, kosher, clean food only. And for that he was rewarded. And for us to choose this life, we will be rewarded. But for now, if you want to come after me, Yeshua says, you take up your execution stake and you follow me. Reuben said to Joshua, whatever you say we'll do, wherever you send us, we will go. We follow you, Joshua, into battle, into the promised land. For whoever will save his life will lose it. But who will lose his life for my sake and for the gospel, the bazora, the good news on how the restoration will take place for that gospel's sake. If you are willing to lose your life, you shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and sits and eats with the great kings of the world? The kings that says in Psalm 2, we hate this courts and bands and ropes that this God wants to tie us up with. We want to break away from it. And yet God says in Hosea 11 verse 4, I pull you with the bands and the cords and the ropes of love. I pull you back to me. We are willing to be pulled. We are willing to be tied up by the ropes because when you tie up your precious cargo on the ship in a storm, it does not fall overboard and is lost. Yeshua, tie us up with your ropes, your bands, because those words, the word for band has got to do in the Hebrew with instruction because the band is um, constricting you to do things that God does, not, God does not want you to do. It is maybe limiting you. And that's why the people of this world wants to break away from that. We don't want to be under your law. Your law is a curse. We want to be free by Jesus. Father, I pray, please teach your people that Yeshua is the one that makes us free by bringing us into your courts of love. Because inside your camp is the only safe place. Jericho we're eating and Egypt and Babylon is eating the nice delicacies and the nice fluffy white bread while we are eating your unleavened bread during Pesach. But we choose that because we know our reward will be so great to taste you one day. 
and to actually pluck from the tree of life one day and to meet Adam and Chavah and Chava and Abraham and Moses and Joshua and all these guys again one day and Peter and Paul and John and you. We want to eat from you. We don't want to break away from this narrow road where we are not allowed to go off to the left or to the right. We don't want to follow this world. We want to follow you, Yeshua. And you are the only way back to God. But this way back is the road of affliction, persecution, constriction, limitation. Because what are you limiting us from? I'm limiting you from not eating pig. Oh, that's so bad. Bacon is so nice. I don't like this constricted lifestyle. Yet when we follow this constricted lifestyle, we become healthy and holy and clean in the sight of God and in our flesh. It is not so to come home at 10 o'clock at night when your daddy says, 10 o'clock, but daddy, all my friends can stay out until 11. Daddy doesn't care. You come home at 10. Because in a couple of years when you look back, those parents who allowed their young children to stay out until 11 o'clock at night doing all sorts of what? Being busy with what? Look back into their lives and see how that freedom brought them into the prison of darkness. While the constriction, the bread of affliction of Yahuwah will bring you into the final redemption of eternal life. What will it profit you if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? Whoever will be ashamed of me, ashamed of this pierced. Whoever is ashamed of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, I will be ashamed when I come in the glory of my Father with my holy angels. When the captain of the host comes in the glory of the Father with his holy angels to come and judge this world and, and come and complete the final battle. And, and we are being found in the palaces of the world eating the delicacies of Babylon. He is not going to know us. And we're not going to know him. And we can knock and say, let us in, let us in. But he will say, go away from me. I never knew you. Go away. I'm, I don't know you. I'm not going to stand up for you. You never stood up for me. But if he's going to find us eating the bread of affliction, he's going to lift us up. That's why Yeshua says, those who are last will be first. And those who are first. And those who are first will be lost. Those who sit at the bottom end of the table um, don't, he said to the Pharisees, um, you are like this. You come into the dining room and you want to take the best seat. Don't be like that. Because when the host of the dinner comes in, he might have another VIP guest that needs to sit there and he's going to tell you to move. No, you come in. You wash the feet of your fellow brothers and sisters. You carry the uh, execution stake upon your back. You are like the wheat that bows its head down while the tears are standing up. So when Yeshua comes back, his holy angels will recognize you and he will, he will bring you up, make you from a servant. You become a bond servant. You are willing to become a bond servant. You know what that means. We've discussed it during the Torah studies. And he makes you a son, you a son in his house next to his um, right hand at the dinner table. This is what it means to be willing to eat the manna for 40 years. And they, um, back to Joshua 5 verse 11. And they ate of the old corn of the land on the morning after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morning after they have eaten of the old corn of the land. Now that had the children of Israel manna any more. But then they started eating of the fruit of the promised land. May we realize and understand and love this future promise. Because eating from this fruit will make us meet face to face 
the fruit of the vine, the fruit, the seed of the woman, the fruit from the loins of, of Abram. And, and this is exactly what happens to Joshua next. He meets the captain of the host face to face. If you want to meet the captain of the host face to face, if you want to eat from the tree of life, be willing to continue to eat the unleavened bread and the manna. Don't be like the previous generation who wanted to go back to the meat pots of Egypt. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. God will fulfill this whole journey out of Egypt back to the promised land. Don't give up land. Don't give up land.